This is a Stream Deck, and today I am going to show you how you can control your Blackmagic camera and DJI RS2 gimbal using the BitFocus Companion OS. This can be very practical for remotely triggering rec start stop, uh, autofocus, showing status display, or even moving the camera around and saving and recalling custom position presets. First, we are going to focus on remote camera control, and in the second part of the video, we will see how you can control a DJI gimbal with the middle things APCR using companion. First, you will need to control the Blackmagic camera with an atom for this to work. So it can be any atom. Here we are using the Atom Mini Extreme. I just plug the HD. HDMI camera port um, into the Atom input number one here. Um, I'll bring, I'll add um, DC power to here. So there we go. Our Atom is uh, powered on. So now that the Atom is connected to the camera using HDMI, the Atom is controlling this camera, this Blackmagic camera. You can see that as I adjust the settings here on the Atom Mini, um, it controls the camera. Now that's where we're introducing the Stream Deck with BitFocus Companion. Uh, you download and install the latest BitFocus Companion app from the official website. Once it's installed, so you just run it here. So you double click and here we'll press launch GUI. There we go. Okay, so now we're in the GUI of Companion. Uh, the Stream Deck uh, interface should change. Here. Now that BitFocus Companion is installed and running, so we're going to the Middle Things website and download the Middle Control software. This software will communicate with the Atom and it will allow you to control your camera straight from your computer. Uh, so you first have to make sure you are connected to the same network uh, the Atom is connected to. So here I'm going to check the Wi Fi here. Um, and it's connected to this network, which is the same as uh, the Atom Mini Extreme. So um, uh, launch the Middle Things app. Now in the switcher tab here, we're going to set the IP address of the switcher. So here it's uh, this one. So press connect. Now it's connected to the switcher. Now go to the camera page. Select your camera number. Here uh, on the Atom Mini Extreme, it was camera number one. And when you press any of these buttons here, um, it should trigger actions on the camera. So you can check like uh, uh, color bars, uh, false colors, um, autofocus, um, zebras, etc. And now we're going to control this middle control uh, app using a companion. So we'll go back into companion. We're going to go in the here in the connections tab. You're going to search for uh, middle things, middle control here. So you press add. Once it's done here, so uh, we can label it like uh, middle control. So that's it's a bit cleaner. Um, and in the edit connection here, so we're going to go down and set the middle control IP address. So here middle control is running on the same computer. So we'll put 127.0.0.1. And we could put the IP address of any other computer on the network that has the middle control running. So we're gonna press save here. We're going to go into uh, buttons here. And on the first button, so we're going to uh, add here a regular button. Uh, here we'll name it like autofocus. Uh, we can put a background color too, like uh, this one. And in the press actions, we're going to look for the middle control. So here, um, select camera ID. So first we're going to select uh, which camera ID uh, we want to control and then we're going so here it's camera ID number one and then we're going to add a second action so a middle control here send camera action and uh, the action will be autofocus here okay so now here on the stream deck we can see our only button here uh, the red autofocus and when I press it the camera just um, triggers an autofocus you do not have to use the select camera ID command. We could just delete it. And if we do that, it will just send uh, the autofocus to the currently selected um, camera in middle control. So um, if I have like uh, camera three selected here, it will just send autofocus to uh, camera number three. Um, so this is just an action to tell middle control to change camera. Now we can do the same for uh, recording. So. Here we'll create another button here, regular button. So rec, like this with a, like, I don't know, we'll make it blue here. 
and then here uh, camera action so we'll uh, send a camera action here and we'll type uh, rec start recording on all cameras and this way um, when I press it if for instance like camera 8 is selected it doesn't matter because when I press on this button here it will start triggering uh, the recording on all the cameras that are connected to the ATEM. So as you can see here, it's recording. Now, if you have multiple cameras, you might want to create a few buttons that allow you to switch between cameras. So for this, you just create a button here. So a regular button, we'll call that like cam one. So it's selecting camera number one. So uh, middle control, select camera ID one, etc. So now we can uh, copy this one and we'll copy it uh, twice like this. So we'll call this one cam two because it's going to select uh, camera number two and this one cam three because it's going to select the third one. Okay, if I open middle control, now you see that when I press these buttons, it will toggle between the three cameras. So I can have like a line of camera selections. I can call them um, anything I want and then um, I can just like switch between cameras here. Now there's something very important which you may want to do which is to highlight the button in like say, let's say red when the given camera is on air so that you don't mess up um, this specific camera. So for this first we need to add a connection to the ATEM so that it knows which camera um, is currently on air etc. So we're going to click add here we're going to put the um, uh, ATEM IP address, of course, here. So here I can say it's an ATEM Mini Extreme. There we go, save. And now uh, if we go to buttons here, now we'll create a feedback action here. So we're going to select tally program and input camera one. Here is camera one. So it will put the, um, the button with a, a red background. So we can do the same for camera two, so feedback. Um, totally program camera two yes and then camera three same we'll add a feedback with the tally program and input camera three so this way as you can see when I switch uh, between uh, inputs on the atom the the background of the button will light up in red just um, to like uh, warn us before doing any gimbal or camera correction on this camera when it's on air now we can go even further than that and uh, we can set the names here, Cam1, Cam2, Cam3. Automatically we can uh, take the names from the ATEM. So for instance here, instead of Cam1 here, I'm going to go to variables, uh, Blackmagic Design ATEM variables. And here we're going to take um, the short name here of Source ID Camera1. So we're gonna copy this one and here um, I'm gonna paste it into uh, the name of the of the button here. So atom short one. And then here. And now if I give it a name into uh, atom software control here, uh, labels. So instead of cam one, we'll call it like name. Okay. And now you'll see that in companion, it's gonna grab the name from uh, atom software directly. So uh, this is very practical too. Now we can go even further and control a DJI RS2 using the gimbal actions. Uh, so for this, you will need to connect uh, a middle things APCR here to uh, your gimbal and your network router so that we can control it. I've put a link in the description if you want to know more about the APCR. We also have tutorials online to set up and run your APCR. So um, feel free to check these out. Once it's connected and configured, you can create a gimbal actions just like the camera actions. We'll create a left pan button. So we'll add a regular button here. We'll call it pan left. Now here uh, in the actions, we'll select a gimbal action this time by middle control uh, and here pan left, perfect. Now, uh, when we release the button, we have to tell it to stop panning. So we're going to select um, here, send gimbal action on release. So do you see the difference? The press actions is when you press the key and the release actions is once you release it. So once you release, you have to create here a pan idle to just stop it from moving. There we go, we can uh, test it here. So I'm gonna put camera one here, here, and then you see, it just moves. We'll do the same for the other pans and tilts. So we'll copy this one here. 
So now, as you can see, I can just move here. I can just press these buttons and it will just move. We can also control the speed of the pan tilt. So here we're going to create a new button here. And then here uh, we'll create a speed uh, plus press action. So we're going to set a gimbal action and uh, zoom speed pan tilt speed increase. And then we're going to copy this one and put a speed minus and here we're gonna select a uh, pan's tilt speed decrease. Okay, so uh, uh, you can see that when I when I um, open middle control and I go to gimbal actions here, uh, it will just like uh, move the pan tilt speed up and down like this as I press the buttons. If you're a perfectionist, instead of putting titles uh, for buttons, you can load PNG files instead of uh, text labels for the buttons. You can download uh, an icon pack that we made and uh, which will make your life easier. I've put the link in the description to uh, the download page. And also uh, to make things easier, instead of uh, putting and creating all the buttons one by one, uh, you can download our predefined one page configuration that is on that very same link um, and if you go to import and export here uh, then import configuration you will be able to select that companion config file and um, it will load all the um, predefined buttons for you like pan tilt uh, autofocus and you have a page that is ready to go and now let's finish with presets so if you want to save custom position presets and recall them later, if you want to do it from companion, so here we uh, will just create a button here, a regular button, and it will we'll call it play 1.1. So this will uh, play the first preset of camera one. And here we're going to, uh, in the actions, recall save preset here. And we're going to take preset number one from camera one and it's uh it's we're playing the preset so it's a recall now we're going to copy this play here we're going to do the second preset so it's preset number two from camera one uh, recall here and here we're going to copy this and we're going to call that rec so it's just it's recording so we need to watch out so we'll take a like let's say an orange color here um, and so because we need to be careful and then so we'll uh, copy paste this here rec 1.2 so here these buttons will actually record the preset and these ones will just play it back so rec 1.1 so we'll call it uh, save and rec 1.2 we'll call it uh, save okay so uh, rec 1.1 if we want to just like save the current position we'll just press like rec 1.1 and it will just uh, save the current position. Now, if I move the gimbal a little, so I'm just gonna pan it like, let's say here, very small, maybe a bit down, very small movement here. Uh, I'm gonna record that in the second preset. So I'm gonna press here, rec 1.2. There we go, preset one. And now preset two, preset one. Preset 2, Preset 1. As you can see, uh, you can just uh, save and recall presets this way. So uh, this is a very practical way of controlling uh, metal control. And for the rest, it's up to your creativity. So um, if you noticed, when you create a button, you can add multiple actions. So I can just like uh, add a camera actions after uh, recalling a preset, such as like an autofocus. And then I can create, I can stack multiple actions with one single buttons. I can create a delay like uh, 400 milliseconds. Uh, if you create delays between actions, you have to make sure uh, that uh, you press relative delays here because um, uh, this way each delay will be after the previous action. Otherwise it's an absolute uh, delay from the start. So it's best to use relative delays uh, so that you can specify the time between uh, actions. And yeah, so for instance, you can create a sequence of presets. Uh, so uh, every second the camera will go somewhere. Let's say uh, you have pro presenter running, you can set it um, to uh, trigger a slide like slide number 54. And on slide number 54, 
It will also tell the camera to go to this very specific framing so that you can have your super source up and ready uh, very fast. So that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments and we'll try to respond as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you soon.